napaka-familiar na passage of scripture in John chapter number 6 and we'll be reading responsively verses 1 to 14. I'll read verse 1, I'll ask you to read verse 2, alternate po ta, and um, uh, we'll read verse 14 all together. Uh, John chapter 6, in verse number 1, the Bible says, After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten altogether palihug. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth that prophet should come into the world. Ang title ng uh, lesson nato uh, tonight uh, ay... Clearly seeing beyond. Clearly seeing beyond. Magampo ta. Father in heaven, we thank you for this uh, wonderful privilege that you have given us uh, tonight, that we can freely gather and proclaim and preach and study your word. There are many countries uh, in other parts of the world na walay freedom and help us, O oh God, na wag naming uh, Uh, it take for granted ang privilege na ito. Lord, we just pray that your Holy Spirit will speak to our hearts. If there are those in our midst tonight, uh, or even those na nag-watch uh, via live streaming, na dili pa luas, uh, dili pa sure, uh, ng kanilang eternal destiny, Lord, I pray that you will make these people realize their need of a Savior and that Jesus is the only way to heaven. And Father, para naman po sa aming mga uh, tiyak na ng langit, sa mga kristohanon, uh, diri, Lord, I pray that you will help us to recognize that the reason why we are still alive, it's because you still have a plan and purpose for each and every one of us. Nais nyo pa po kaming gamitin at nang sagayon, mas marami pa po ang makakilala sa inyong anak, ang Panginoong Heso Kristo. Lord, we pray that tonight our worship will be acceptable. May you be pleased with the response of your people to your challenge for us this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Maraming salamat. You may now be seated. I am sure that this church is very familiar sa tinatawag na Great Commission. In the next slide, alam nato that this is a mandate that it, it that is compulsive. It is a required uh, uh, thing to do. No, hindi po ito suggestion. Why? Because it is commanded by the one with all power. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to him. And he is the one who commanded us to go. And we know that our mission mission is extensive because we are commanded to reach all nations kasama po ang mga restricted access nations at ano po ang mensaheng dadalhin natin to the uttermost parts of the world the message is inclusive no it is a command to teach all things whatsoever the lord has commanded us and we are thankful that by the grace of god your church has been faithfully fulfilling this mandate given by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Probably you are wondering, ano ang koneksyon ng uh, uh, Great Commission sa, sa, sto, sa, sa feeding of the more than 5,000? 
Okay? And I personally, I would like to believe that God would like us to clearly see beyond the here and now. And even in this passage of Scripture, God wants us to clearly see principles that will help us na magpadayon ta sa Great Commission. And alam niyo po, no? uh, uh, to see beyond, literally, it means uh, even though there is a person or somebody in front of you, you can still see the people or yung mga bagay uh, bi, uh, sa likod ng taong kaharap natin. In the next slide, it means uh, you can already imagine or perceive what God can do in the future. Kahit hindi pa ito nangyayari. So, if we can see beyond this pandemic, no, na-imagine na natin what God can do even after this pandemic. Now, it also means to perceive or understand things that happen or exist outside the limits or scope of something. May mga bagay na dili na ito masabtan. Okay? But I believe that God has a purpose for everything na inalaw ng ginoo na mangyari sa ating buhay. Even this pandemic, God has a purpose. God wants us to clearly see na ang buhay na ito diri sa, sa earth, temporary lang. Ang daming namatay nung pandemic. Now, tingnan niyo po yung katabi niyo. Are you grateful na buhay pa yung katabi niyo? Okay? Sabihan nato nato yung katabi nato na God still has a plan for you. Okay? Kasi sa dinami-dami ng tinamaan ng COVID, bakit kaya tayo buhay pa? Ibig sabihin may ipinagagawa pa siya. He wants us to clearly see the, the beyond the here and now. And tonight, I would like to believe God wants us to clearly see at least three things. Hinahanglan nato makita number one, the opportunity beyond the inconvenient. The opportunity beyond the inconvenient. Ayaw og tutuki. Ang mga kalisdanan hinuon mututukta sa higayon. Higayon nga gikan sa Ginoo. Alam niyo po no, in this uh, story of the feeding of the more than 5,000, this is a true story. Dili ito parable. It really took place, no? And it has been recorded in all four gospel accounts. And as we take a look at the accounts of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, makita nato first the timing of this opportunity. Kailan ba nangyari itong great opportunity to be a blessing? In John chapter 6 verse 4, nakita nato that uh, the, the Passover was nigh. At itong Passover, this is a very important Jewish uh, feast, no? At pinaghahandaan po talaga nila ito. However, as we look at uh, the book of Mark chapter 6 in verse number 30, we will notice that Jesus Christ and the disciples, they had been very busy. Bakit? In verses uh, 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 31 to 32, makita nato that even the Lord Jesus Christ recognized their need for rest. Sinabi ni G, they had been visiting different villages, different towns para magwali, mahitungod sa, sa, sa kaharian ng Diyos. And sabi ng Panginoong Iso Kristo, magpahulay sa ta, kapoy kaayo, pagod sila. So the Lord Jesus Christ said, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. Nalipasan na sila ng gutom dahil sa sobrang busy doing the ministry. Maraming Kristohanon during the pandemic, pagod na pagod. Pagod sa kaka-TikTok, <laughs> pagod sa kaka-Facebook, kaka no? sa kaka-Insta, sa kaka-Binge Watch. No? Napanood na memorize na nila yung mga, mga Korean novela. No? But these disciples, they were busy doing the things of God. Amen? Alam niyo po itong, Jesus Christ said, we, we need to go to this solitary desert place para makapagresta. Okay? However, in Mark 6.33, you'll notice na the people went after them. <laughs> Sabi ng mga disciples, paano ba tayo makapagrest nito? Ang daming tao. So, ano po nangyari? Makita nato. Secondly, the target in the opportunity. The target in the opportunity, no? Sino ba yung pwede nilang uh, pagsilbihan, no? There was a great multitude. In, sabi sa John chapter 6 verse 2, there was a great multitude. Now, gaano karami ba? Pila karami ang multitude? 
Pag sinabing multitude, dili na mabilang, sobrang dami, daghang ta tao. Pero pag sinabing great multitude, it says something else. Ibig sabihin, sobra sobrang daming tao. You know what? Every time I would come across the phrase great multitude in the Bible, I can't help but think of the more than 1.4 billion people in the world's most populous country. Actually, Pastor, uh, I got saved August of 1998 when I was in my final year in college. And uh, I was invited to a Bible study in the campus later on. I invite ko sa Bethany Makati. And in our church, just like your church, almost every week, maraming nagbivisit na mga missionaries. And every time there would be a missionary presentation and preaching about missions, I could sense that the Lord was calling me. Eh, kaya lang sabi ko, Lord... Mag-faithful na lang ko, mag-member na lang ko, mag-hatag na lang ko sa mission, mag-ampo na lang ko. Lord, just don't call me to be a pastor or a missionary. Ayaw ko po talaga. Pero alam niyo po, kung ang ginoo, tinatawag ta sa ministry, there will be no peace until we surrender. So after much bargaining, sabi ko, okay Lord, Uh, when I attended a youth camp in Baguio, all my answers, uh, all my questions and fears were answered through the preaching. Sabi ko, Lord, talagang di ka nagbibiro ah. E during that time, newly saved ako, so sabi ko, Lord, I don't know much. How can you use me? So the Lord led me to enroll in Baptist Bible College. I was working as a, a teacher in the morning, uh, in the afternoon, and then sa evening, nag-Bible school ko. So uh, during my second year, Uh, there was an American missionary na uh, he's a missionary to China. And there's something uh, in his testimony preaching that really struck my heart. Sabi niya, this country is close to missionaries, but it is very much open to professionals, especially teachers. E during that time, I was teaching. Sabi ko, Lord, what's your message? So at first, I ignored it. Baka naman emotion lang. But hindi po nawala yung burden. So nag-pray ko, Lord, if you really want me to serve you in that country, Lord, allow me, makita ko man lang, ano ba itsura ng communist country? Alam niyo po, hindi nagbibiro ang Panginoon. Talagang pinapunta niya ako. <laughs> At ginamit niya yung aking work. No? Uh, inutusan ako ng boss ko, sabi niya, John, dalhin mo yung ating mga business. Uh, I teach business and economics in a university in Manila. At na-assign ako na magdala ng business students sa Shanghai World Expo. So all expenses paid for one week. At totoo naman pala, pinarealize sa, ako ng, uh, sa akin ng Panginoon, ang dami palang inchik sa China. Ay malamang. <laughs> Pero sobrang dami ng tao na pag sumakay ka sa tren, dili mo na kailangan na maghawak sa railing, dili ka matumba. Kasi sobrang sikip, sobrang siksikan yung ulo ng katabi mo. Kat Kandito lang. Pag nagharap kayo, yung hininga niya, hinihinga mo rin. At pwede kayo talaga magkapalit ng mukha. Talagang sobrang daming tao. But the Lord made me realize, John, ilan kaya dito ang luwas na? Ilan kaya ang sure na ng heaven? And the Lord just placed this burden in my heart. You know what? The Bible says in Matthew 14, 14, When Jesus saw a great multitude, He was moved with compassion toward them, and He healed their sick. Mark chapter 6, verse 34, This same compassion led Jesus Christ to teach them what they needed to, to know. Alam niyo po, nakita ng, ng uh, ginoo na uh, hindi lang yung physical needs, pati yung spiritual needs nakita na, ng, ng, ng Panginoong Isu Kristo. And I would like to believe that when Jesus Christ saw these people as sheep not having a shepherd, He grabbed the opportunity to teach them their real condition before God. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And there's such a thing called hell. And that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And personally, I believe Jesus Christ grabbed this great opportunity to tell this great multitude that He is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no man cometh unto the Father but by Him. Alam niyo po, in Luke 9, 11, He received them and spake unto them of the kingdom of God, and He healed them that needed healing. Friends, sometimes, Great opportunities will come at very inconvenient times. Pagod sila, they needed to rest for the Passover. Pero 
while they saw the same group of people, the disciples focused on the inconvenience while Jesus Christ focused on the opportunity. Alam niyo po, uh, there will always be, number three, the temptation in every opportunity. And the disciples, no, nung nakita nila itong dami ng tao, they approached the Lord Jesus Christ and said, Lord, send them away. Why? Ang sabi nila, eh, Lord, this is a desert place. Wala store diri. Eh, Lord, what time is it na? Gabi na, Lord. Pa, pa, send them away para maabutan nila yung mga, mga stores doon sa mga villages so they can buy themselves food and victuals. Aba, at first glance, parang concerned. But you know what? Nakakalungkot because the Bible records Mark chapter 6, verse 52, the true condition of the disciples' hearts. Look with me in Mark chapter 6, verse number 52. The Bible records that the disciples, they considered not the miracle of the loaves. Why? For their heart was hardened. Isa ito sa pinakamalungkot na talata sa Biblia. Imagine, these disciples, katatapos lang nila na mag-visitation, katatapos lang nilang mag-good news classes, katatapos lang nilang mag-preach about the kingdom of God, at nagtudlo sila sa mga, mga villages, and you know what, kasama nga sila sa nag-distribute ng tinapay at ng isda, kasama sila sa nag-eat all you can, kasama sila sa labusog, but the Bible records that they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. Posibly pala na isang, uh, isang Kristiyano, faithfully attending services, involved sa napakadaming ministry, but posibly pala na kung dili tayo maging careful, we, are, we can do these things with a heart na matigas, hardened by sin. Kaya ito po, no, uh, I hope and I pray we get to understand that even despite the inconveniences, mayroong mga great opportunities for us to be a blessing and for us to serve our great God. Now, doing ministry and missions, hindi siya pandali. In the next slide, no, it is very inconvenient uh, to leave behind our family and friends. Iwan namin yung aming career. I've been teaching for, for the past 20 years. My wife is a registered nurse. And nung tinanong siya nung kanyang, uh, previous slide po tayo, uh, nung tinanong siya ng kanyang auntie na ano, mag-work ka ba diri sa Amerika to be a, a nurse o pasakasalan mo yung missionary na yan? Buti na lang pinakasalan yung missionary. Pero dili na lang masabtan. Punta kayo sa isang restricted access nation. Dalhin niyo yung mga maliliit yung anak. Very inconvenient. In the, uh, in the previous slide, no, alam niyo po, uh, next slide na pala. Uh, it's a country na iba ang kultura, iba ang language. Para kaming grade 1 uli na mag-aral kami ng nihaw. Uh, ang alam ko lang dati, Pastor, inihaw. <laughs> Pero alam niyo po, no, despite the inconveniences of leaving behind your fruitful ministry in your home church, there are great opportunities. This is Sister Michelle. Member siya ng Bethany Makati before, Christian, nakapangasawa ng local Chinese, and English teacher po siya. And until this day, wala siyang maatendang single church. In their place, doon sa kabansang ito, walay church. And despite the inconvenience, nagpatuloy, nagpadayon lang siya na, na, na mag-share ng gospel sa kanyang mga 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 students itong sa bandang right no sa sa tuo um, they she they are singing the how, the wise man built his house upon the rock alam niyo po kahit na inconvenient there are opportunities amen in the next slide alam niyo po no itong mga bata na ito sa sa tuo uh, sa wala um we ask them no when we visited some of the villages up in the mountains of Yunnan province uh, Gi-ask na mo sila na, have you heard the name Jesus Christ? Their answer broke our hearts. Sabi nila, we have never heard of that name. And uh, who will tell them? Wala na pong iba kundi tayong nakakilala na. Itong mga young people, mga college students sa, sa, sa tuo, no? sa, sa right, uh, they are, pag nalaman nila na tayo ay foreigner at tayo ay nag, marunong mag-English, kahit pa karabaw English ang meron ta, Alam niyo, gusto nila ta i-add friend, no? Why? 
Gusto nila tayong pagpraktisan. <laughs> Gusto nilang matuto ng English. But friends, this is an opportunity to develop friendships and later on share with them the gospel. Friends, there are great opportunities even in the midst of inconveniences. Ayaw og tutuki ang mga kalisdanan, hinuon, mututok ta sa higayon nga gikan sa Ginoo. Secondly, God wants us to clearly see kinahanglan nato makita the omnipotent beyond the impossible. The omnipotent beyond the impossible. Ayaw og tutuki ang mga imposible, hinuon mututok ta sa Dios na walay imposible sa pinakagamhanan na Dios. Walang imposible sa Ginoo. Hello. Amen. Alam niyo po, no, sometimes we are like the disciples. Ano ang nakita ng mga disciples in, in, in uh, John chapter 6? First, they saw na yung pinagawa ni Jesus Christ na make the men sit down. Lord, sure ka, pakainin na to. But they, they were thinking, Lord, yung pinagawa mo naman sa amin in the next slide, humanly illogical. Lord, first, dili natin sila in-invite. It's not a responsibility. Second, Lord, ang daming-daming tao. Walay pera, walay kwarta. Saan tayo kukuha ng pakain sa, sa daming tao na yan? And sometimes, God may ask us to do something na dilit na ito, masabtan. For example, tithing. Lord, ito ang income ko. Dili, pa, dili enough sa, sa family ko. Eh, ang tatakaw pa naman ng mga anak ko, Lord. No? O di kaya, Lord, sure ka, Lord. Patawarin ko itong tao na ito. Eh, sabi ng Lord, bless and uh, uh, curse not. <laughs> bless them that persecute thee. Di po ba? Eh, Lord, alam mo naman ang ginawa ng taong yan sa akin. Napakasakit. Di ba? Eh, pero some, God wants us to love our enemies. Di ba? O yung iba naman, probably nag-iisip, Lord, sure ka, Lord, ako ay yung breadwinner. Are you really calling me to be in full-time ministry? Lord, I mean, there are things na ipagawa ng ginoo na dili na ito masabtan. But when we obey, there will be blessings. Okay? Now, si Philip, nag-compute na siya. Sabi, Lord, 200 penny worth is not enough. Dili yan sufficient, Lord, to, to feed everyone. So ang iisip ni, ni, ni Philip, by themselves, they were financially insufficient. Walay kwarta. Ano ba yung 200 penny worth na yan? Sometimes gusto na natin i-skip pag dili natin masabtan, no? Ay yung 200 penny worth, ito po yan, mga kaigsuna, no? One penny in the Greek is one denarius. And it is equivalent to one day salary of an unskilled laborer. So ibig sabihin, kahit magpa-offering pa sila uh, right there and then, and there are 200 na katao na magbigay ng one day salary, dili yan enough, Lord, to feed all these people. At kung manggaling yung 200 penny worth of bread na yan sa isang tao lang, it is equivalent to six to seven months salary. Alam ko diri sa pigarangan may mga willing mag-donate ng 6 to 7 months salary para magpakain ng mga tao, hindi nila in-invite at hindi nila kilala. Pero itong mga disciples, ayaw nila. Lord, walay kwarta. Eh sabi ni Andrew, wait Lord, I saw there's a little lad here, meron, may, may uh, adunay siya, uh, uh, five barley loaves, uh, two small fishes, okay na sana. Kaya lang, may kasunod pa eh. What, but what are they among so many? May kasunod pa eh. Minaliit pa yung dalay. Eh. At saka, ano ba yung five barley loaves na yan? Yung barley loaf, pang mahirap, ordinary yung bread. Sabi ni Andrew Lord, ito may dalang tinapay. Lima na nga lang, pang mahirap pa Lord. Tsaka yung, yung fishes niya, dalawa na nga lang Lord. Gam ah, jutay ba o gamay? Uh, maliit pa! Di ko lang alam kung bulad ito o uh, dilis, I don't know. Pero minaliit ni Andrew. And notice this, friends, so in all four gospel accounts, Andrew took the time to know ano ang bao ng batang ito, pero di niya man lang tinanong yung name. Anong name ni mo? <laughs> Bakit? In the eyes of the disciples, this little lad is practically insignificant. Walay magawa, walay makontribute. In fact, dili nga siya kasama sa 5,000 na, na number. Kasi little lad lang siya. So sometimes we are like that, no? Feeling na to na, Lord, walay kwarta, dili ako maka-join, maka, maka, uh, joins, sa, makatabang sa world missions. Lord, I am a nobody. I don't think you can use me. But you know the story. Jesus Christ performed a great 
miracle. Amen? And if you will study all the miracles in the Bible, you will notice no, the anatomy of a miracle. It usually starts with an impossible situation. Kaya nga kung meron kang imposibling sitwasyon sa iyong kinabuhi, congratulations. You have a raw material for a miracle. Probably it's financial in nature. It probably it's a health crisis. Probably it's a relational family problem. Na Lord, dili na mag-change ang person yan. I, I don't think mag-accept yan kay Jesus Christ, yung person na yan. Lord, wala nang pag-asa itong family na to na mabuo. Lord, sirang-sira na. Lord, I messed up. I don't know your impossible situation. Probably may mga young ladies diri na Lord faithful naman ako but wala pa rin yung right man ko no parang imposible na Lord wala na ako sa kalendaryo pero alam niyo po no ito yung 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 raw material for a miracle pero usually ang impossible situation may kasunod diyan na simple instruction always in all the miracles in the Bible God Jesus Christ will always ask them to do something something doable pero sometimes dili na to masabtan Lord, sure ka, Lord. Pakainin natin lahat yan. No? Ang hinihintay lang ni Jesus Christ, yung third, no? yung trusting submission. Kaya I like this word here. Obey. No? Ako, I believe there are blessings up there in heaven. Nakabox na ito. Nakapangalan, naka-address na sa ato. And then, nag-aantay na yung mga lalamove drivers ng heaven at sabi na, Lord, i-deliver ko na ba ito sa pigkarangan, tong blessing na ito? Sabi ng Lord, wait lang, wait lang. Check muna nato if mag-obey with trusting submission. Are you waiting for a miracle in your life, young lady, young man? You know what? If it's God's will, walay imposible sa ginoo. Actually, uh, during my first visit to uh, that communist country, sabi ko, Lord, one week is not enough para makita ko paano ba mag-ministry sa country na to. Uh, so I prayed another prayer, Lord, allow, if it's really your will, allow me to go back. Uh, para makatabang ako sa mga missionaries na nandoon na sa field. Alam niyo sinagot ng Ginoo. The Lord answered that prayer. So, one day, uh, my boss approached me. Sabi niya, John, you've been with uh, the university for quite some time. You are now entitled to a service leave. Ma'am, ano po yung service leave? Pwede ka magbakasyon for three months, one semester, with pay. Are you? Are you sa? With pay? Okay ah. Oh, payagan ako sa work na mawala ng one semester. Ang tanong ko, Lord, payagan kaya ako ng pastor ko? Marami ang responsibility sa church. Alam niyo po, kung kalooban ng ginoo, the Lord will speak to our authority. Nagpaalam ako kay Pastor Nabli, sabi niya, okay, go, that's, uh, the, the, uh, that's good, that's missions. So okay na sa pastor ko. Eh, sabi ko, Lord, pamasahe. Magkano lang naman ang sweldo ng teacher. Nagpa-quotation ako, 21,000 pastor, round trip. Ang mahal. Pero dahil kalooban ng ginoo, nagka-promo from 21,000 naging 5,000 pesos round trip. Okay, Lord ha. Eh kaya lang, Lord, paano yung visa? <laughs> Dili naman ako maka-enter ng country nang walay visa. Eh nag-file ako ng application form. Sabi nung, nung sa travel agency, Sir, mukhang malabo to Kasi madami nag-apply, denied. Kasi may problema during that time ang Pilipinas at ang China with panatag soul. So sabi ko, basta apply lang ako. sa Lord, bahala ka na. If it's your will, you will make a way. And true enough, dili na ako pinapunta sa embassy, dili na ako in-interview, dili na ako hinang, hininga, hiningaan ng bank statement. They gave me a one-month tourist visa extendable to a maximum of three months. The exact amount I needed. So talagang kung kalooban ng ginoo, walay imposible. Amen? Yeah, friends, I believe God wants us to clearly see that we have an omnipotent God. And third and last, God wants us to clearly see from this passage of Scripture, number three, okay, uh, God wants us to clearly see the outcome beyond uh, the investment. The outcome beyond the investment. Ayaw tutuki kung pila ang magasto imong sakripisyo sa ginoo, hinuon mututok ta sa resulta sa atong investment para sa eternity. Adunay abundanong panalangin nga gikan sa ginoo. 
abundant blessings if we will just obey. And you know what? This little lad did not have any idea what Jesus Christ would do, pero na, uh, nakita ng little lad na to that first there was an opportunity. May higayon. Secondly, nakita niya that Jesus Christ is omnipotent. So what did he do? He invested the little lunch that he had, everything that he had, minaliit man ito ng iba, binigay niya ang lahat-lahat sa ginoo. And you know the outcome. There were at least three outcomes. First, the crowd was satisfied. Lahat, ang daming nakakain. 5,000 men. At kung bibilangin pa yung mga kababaihan at mga kabataan, I believe more than 5,000. All because there was a little lad who was willing to share his lunch. Amen? Alam niyo po, ano, ganyan ang mag-bless ang ginoo. Kung may mga little lads lang na magpagamit sa ginoo, you know what? Billions of people will be able to taste the bread of life and their thirst will be quenched by the living water, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, question, nawalan ba itong little lad na ito? I don't think so. I believe, secondly, this child was replenished. Okay? Kasama siya doon sa mga nakapag-eat all you can. Sabi dito, as much as they would. At sabi pa, and when they were filled, nakakain na sila ng eat all you can, nabusog pa. Maraming kristyano, kain ang kain, dilit na bubusog. Pero ang ginoo pag mag-bless, bubusogin ka niya. Amen? Probably there are people here, you, you know, God is calling you into the ministry and you are thinking, paano ang family ko? Lord, the Lord will take care of us. Amen? Pag nakita niyo po ang aming mga anak, parang napabayaan sa kusina. <laughs> Ganyan po ang Panginoon. He will take care of those who will invest in His work. Ako po, personally, I believe ang nag-take home nitong mga 12 baskets, ay itong, itong 12 baskets na natira, I believe itong little lad, although many would, Many would say na tigi isa daw yung mga disciples. Eh pero dahil sinabi ng Bible that their hearts were hardened, tapos ang nag-invest naman talaga itong little, little lad, I believe it was the little lad uh, who brought home the, the take home. no? But regardless, hindi li nakasabi, pero I believe Jesus Christ replenished this child. Amen? And the most important blessing of all is that Jesus Christ was magnified. The people knew that this is something that an ordinary person can not do. Kaya in the end, Jesus Christ was magnified. Kung mag-obey lang ta, just like this little lad, if we will invest for eternity, you know what? Jesus Christ will be magnified. And I am thankful that eh, doon sa three months na nag-visit ako uh, in that country, the Lord gave me the privilege na makita ko personally what He can do through little lads in the Philippines. And because meron ng mga nagsuko ng buhay to serve in that communist country at dahil may mga churches diri sa Pilipinas na patuloy na nag-ampo, naghatag sa misyon, nagtabang-tabang para uh, makapagpadala ng misyonary, ito na po ang outcome ng atong investment. First, many have heard the gospel. At marami na po ang nagpabaptize. Friends, this is a communist restricted access nation. And God is doing something great. He's doing a great miracle. Are we going to be part of it? I know your church has been a part of this great miracle. Yung mga nabaptized na, yung mga nasaved na, they are being discipled one-on-one. -on -one. And kaya lang, we need more disciples. At itong mga nadidisciple na they are now part of local New Testament Baptist churches and they are singing praises unto our God in their language all because there are little lads in the Philippines na nagbibigay ng kung anuman yung meron sila in their hands to the Lord. At ang blessing po, may bonus pa. May mga nag-surrender na, na maging pastor o maging missionary. They are just waiting for us to go back so we can train them, reach their own people. On behalf of Team China, please allow me from the bottom of our hearts to thank you, Pigkarangan Bible Baptist Church, for investing for eternity. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Every soul that we win in that country, you have a great part. And I'm looking forward to that day up there in heaven when Chinese souls will tap you in the shoulder and say, thank you for giving to the Lord. Let me encourage you by ending with what Jim Elliot once said. He said, he is no fool who gives up what he cannot keep to gain that which he cannot lose. Friends, let's continue to invest 
for eternity. May we clearly see beyond the here and now. Let's all stand. Father in heaven, we thank you for encouraging our hearts even through uh, uh, this uh, little lad who invested everything that he had in your work. Lord, I thank you for this church, for their great love for missions, for their obedience to your command. And Father, I just pray that you will continue to call more men and women into the ministry, even in restricted access nations. Lord, may you continue to replenish this church in a very special way. May your name be glorified and magnified. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.